When we last met with Robert and Liza Fishbone, this father-daughter duo had just completed a mural for Urban Harvest. Urban Harvest, that was an incredible project for us and for the client, and transformed that particular corner of downtown. And in fact, my daughter and I have continued to transform different neighborhoods, different locations with murals. That one, I'm, I'm just really proud of the painting. I think doing that unlocked some style within me that I hadn't really explored. And so that was really exciting. Robert Fishbone had a long history of painting murals with his late wife, Sarah. And it meant everything to us. It's, it, we didn't come to St. Louis to do murals, but that's how our life evolved. And now Robert paints exclusively with his daughter, Liza. My dad has a thing that he always says that we can't only consider what we see, but we have to think about what the wall sees. There's a lot of history there. And so it's our responsibility to consider that history and consider how are people interacting with this space. Whatever we do, we want it to be beautiful. We don't speak to too many social issues, but we feel that what we do has more to do with the human spirit, and that's what we're interested in. We caught up with Robert in front of one of their newer murals in Dogtown. The owner of the building wanted us to do a mural to help uh, unify the community. We decided to basically do a testament to Dogtown, just its name, and the names of the five neighborhoods that make up Dogtown, which are listed on the banners of the mural. We decided to do a large D in the style of an illuminated letter, which you find in medieval manuscripts. And then the cardinal is, you know, we're in St. Louis, <laughs> and the uh, bluebird is actually the Missouri State Bird. And then we just have lovely plants and flowers streaming out from it. Green Street St. Louis sponsored a lot of artworks over the years. Their mission is to bring beautiful housing to the downtown area, as well as beautiful artwork. So they hired On The Wall Productions. When we approached this particular wall, we realized that you know a picture of something was just not gonna work because of all the windows. So if you look at the mural, you'll see that on the top left, there are these shapes that are really like shards, like broken pieces of glass or ceramic. But as they move across the wall, they transform, they change shape, they're evolving, they get larger and larger. But as you get all the way to the right side, they become more vertical, and that's where the windows integrate with them very well. A friend of mine described it as they're, they're dancing across the wall. After 10 years of doing murals for Willard Home Products, beginning in 1995, it was time to refresh the murals that were created by Robert's wife, Sarah. Part of me was a little reluctant to restore it because I didn't know if I was like painting it away. And that was really hard for me. And it still is hard for me. But over the years, it starts to feel more like, okay, this is my job. I don't spend too much time in those emotions, partially because it's just like traumatic. <laughs> so I don't live there. And partially because when we're doing them, we're really just focused and trying to, you know, get everything done in a timely manner. It's been a really interesting process because I'm literally retracing my mom's brush strokes. And so I've learned a lot about painting just through that. This past summer, we restored the last one Plus, he commissioned us to do one new one, which is the wall behind me. And it also happens to be what he first sees when he walks out of where he lives across the street. So that's why his, this cat is in it. It was his cat. But the tableau is uh, one basically of Southeast Asia. We've continued the real bamboo onto the wall. And then there's this corporate logo, the Luna Moth, more plants, the cat. And then we decided to turn the truck dock, which was an entranceway, into a different kind of entranceway, into a gateway, leading you down a path. So we, we got a chance to put our own stamp on the work. We got to design one new piece for his collection. After recently finishing a solo project for the Weinheimer Community Center in Highland, Illinois, Robert moved on to a new chapter, creating labyrinths. There's a lot of ways to think about what is an artist. And really what an artist does is we, we interpret an experience. And doing a labyrinth is a, it's a little, little bit different. Instead of like putting stuff out there, we're, we're going deeper within. 
in some ways it's very different from murals, but in another way it's not. You know, a mural is an escape, you know, from your, from your moment. And a labyrinth is similar, except instead of like, wow, we're slowing everything down. One of several labyrinths he designed was constructed at Villa de Chen, an Oak Hill school. We're creating the labyrinth in the same way that it's used, you know, with a kind of surrender, with a reverence, with a letting go. Um, and it's a profound experience. The primary purpose of this labyrinth is a gift to the campus community. It was the right time uh, and the right response to the call we find ourselves in in the modern day, a place of calm. Robert was given to us as a gift, and he's been a gift to me and to this campus community, not only in this experience of building the labyrinth, but because it's a stable part of our campus now, this iconic campus, it'll be a gift for generations to come.